Hi, I'm Dr. Caroline Leaf and welcome to my podcast, Cleaning Up Your Mental Mess. Well, I'm excited to talk to you today about something that is really important and that is daydreaming. So in today's podcast, we're going to talk about the importance of daydreaming and how it actually helps boost your mental health and increase your brain health and your brain resilience and your intelligence. But before we do that, I just want to remind you about my new book. For those of you that haven't yet picked up a copy of our new book, let me grab it and show you, Cleaning Up Your Mental Mess, same name as this podcast. But if you haven't yet picked it up, get your copy. This is really a book that's going to help you get your mind managed. And considering the fact that our mind is always busy, we need to manage it. You know, life's very experimental. If you think of it, the moment you awake, your mind is actually in an experimental state. And what I mean by that is that your mind is you responding to everything that's happening in your life. From the time you open your eyes till the time you go to sleep. You're going to experience around about 8,000 to 10,000 different events. And each of those are processed through your mind into your brain. Your brain then responds and builds those as little tree-like structures, thoughts. You've heard me say this before. But they're real protein structures. So you've changed the neuroplasticity of your brain or you've directed the neuroplasticity of your brain. So you're going to build about eight to 10,000 of these in a day. Some of them might group together. So you might have 6,000 or whatever. Whatever it is, you are building everything you experience through your mind into your brain. These are healthy thoughts, thoughts made of memories. These are toxic thoughts, my famous toxic and healthy trees. And basically how you manage that process is mind management. So with our mind, we manage our mind. So in the day, as we're building these thought tree-like structures into our brain, these physical representations of our experiences, that's a very, very experimental process. And it's super easy as we are thinking, feeling, and choosing, thinking, feeling, and choosing, thinking, feeling, and choosing in response and building those trees. It's super easy to make a mess. And it's okay. It's experimental. We don't quite know what's coming up in the next moment. So it's kind of experimental. But that experiment can sometimes be a mess. So sometimes we can build a toxic tree and sometimes a healthy tree. But the toxic tree becomes a messy mind and a messy brain and a messy body. And that's what I teach you in this book, to understand that process and understand how to manage it. Because an unmanaged mind increases the vulnerability to disease in your brain and your body. Here's another little model. By 35 to 98%. Mind and body. That's phenomenal. So an unmanaged mind. I show you with my research, my clinical trials that I've been doing for 38 years, put my most recent clinical trials in the book. I show you how you can manage your mind and how this can impact how you manage anxiety and depression by up to 81%, which is amazing. Okay, so this is real hardcore science and stuff to help you manage your mind and your children and your friends and your wife and your husband, whoever you are, you have a mind. If you're alive, your mind is working. Your aliveness is your mind. Your mind is how you think, feel and choose. And unmanaged, it's all an experimental mess. But managed, it becomes a cleaning up of the mental mess and it changes the whole neurophysiology of your brain and your body and your sense of peace and intelligence and cognitive fluency and so on so if you haven't yet picked up your copy go pick up your copy the link will be in the show notes and we have all kinds of amazing things happening around this book and i'm teaching on it all the time back to today's podcast we're going to talk about how daydreaming is one of those amazing things for your brain that we have thought didn't really think was important but it really is fantastic i do talk about daydreaming in the book as well okay so basically i have some great points that i want to make about this and the first thing is that your mind is always active okay your mind never stops 24 7 your mind is working you've got different parts of your mind you've got the conscious mind which is what's working now when you're awake You've got your non-conscious mind that works 24-7. So when you're asleep, your conscious mind switches off, but your non-conscious mind is still working. Then you have your subconscious mind, which is between the conscious and the non-conscious. So it's like a little bridge between the two. The non-conscious is massive. And all of your experiences from a point in the womb to where you are today has been built into your non-conscious mind as these trees. And this is what influences you. This is your nurturing, your belief systems. Every experience you've ever had, the toxic and the healthy, are in your non-conscious mind and in your physical brain and in your body. 
So as we are experiencing life, as you're listening to me now, for example, as you're listening and, and understanding what I'm saying, it's your mind that's doing that. So I say, as you are listening, it's with your mind, your thinking, feeling, and choosing that you're taking my words, pushing that through the brain, and the brain is building this into thoughts inside of your, your mind. This process, you are as you're doing this, thoughts from the non-conscious are moving up through the subconscious into your conscious mind, up and down, around about five to ten every few seconds. And those are informing how you are processing this information. So we build new thoughts based on old thoughts. So our mind is always time traveling. As we are in the present, we are influenced by the past and we are influenced by the future. So when we daydream, we go into this incredible time travel state in an intentional way. So you may have heard that daydreaming is a bad thing. And generally it's had pretty bad press and pretty bad rap. But daydreaming when it's done properly is just absolutely fantastic. So I've called daydreaming having thinker moments to make it more accessible and to make it more intentional and deliberate so that you can get the most benefit out of it. Okay, so let's talk about that. And if I look down, I'm just checking my notes just to make sure, as usual, that I stay on topic because there's so much time stuff I want to give you. Okay, so see, the great news is that you can be very intentional about turning on these time travel daydreaming moments, okay? And that's what a thinker moment is, where you are being intentional and taking, allocating a period of time where you intentionally and deliberately switch off to the external and you switch on to the internal and let your mind, which is not your brain, your mind is moving all over your brain and through your brain, your body, and your brain and body are responding. But as you intentionally and deliberately with your mind make a decision to just switch off to the external and switch on to the internal, then these thoughts from the non-conscious start moving up. All the thoughts that are the, have the most energy at that time start moving up and you get this flow of information moving through your brain. That is just fantastic. You see, our brain gets tired. I'm sure you've experienced that. As your body gets tired, and that's why when we sleep at night, our brain and our body are regenerating. Your conscious mind also gets tired. That's why it switches off when you go to sleep. But your non-conscious never gets tired. So our non-conscious mind is like super energetic. It just never gets tired. So if we don't have thinker moments, these daydreaming moments, our mind is so busy that it pushes all this energy through the brain and the brain gets tired. And the body gets tired. So therefore, thinker moments are ways that we can actually reboot our brain and our body and feel re-energized. Brilliant way of doing that. The immediate benefits are a feeling of calmness, a sense of peace, a sense of clarity in your thinking, so cognitive clarity. Your creativity will improve. Your intelligence will improve so you'll have deeper insight and just have more wisdom around the situation. I mean, just those benefits alone are enough to make you do it. But a massive part is that it's rebooting your brain and bringing a le that level of energy back so that you can actually you know, keep going for the rest of the day. You see, any emotionally taxing experience, and we have a lot of those. Remember, there's 8,000 to 10,000 experiences that we'll have in a day. And a lot of those can be emotionally taxing. So if we don't have our little thinker moments, we can get absolutely worn out with those taxing things of the day. So I think a moment is this absolute gift that we have that not, not many people really talk about to help you naturally reboot your brain and reboot the energy. Now, actually, if you think about it, you're probably already doing this, but you may have not thought it was good. You may have been told, don't daydream, it's bad for you. Daydreaming is really good for you. And there is a way of doing it properly and there's a way you can train yourself and that's what I'm going to tell you. And you can read more about this in my book. So you can read more about the importance of thinker moments. Just very quickly, why did I call them thinker moments? I'm sure you may have seen a picture or maybe even have seen the sculpture, the thinker, where you see him just thinking. Beautiful. And I love that. I love it so much that I call these thinker moments. Now, a very interesting study was done showing that when they put a bunch of people into a room and they told, they told them to just think, just let their mind wander, just daydream. And it was for around about 16 minutes. And there was nothing in the room, no cell phones, no computers, nothing. And interestingly enough, the majority of people hated doing it. They hated just sitting there thinking. Now, this is a phenomenon this hating, actually just mind wandering, is a phenomenon of our current age where we have become so busy over the last 40 years. It's one of the side effects of advanced technology. 
please don't get me wrong, technology is so important. But unmanaged, one of the side effects is that we can actually forget to have these thinker moments. And there's many other side effects, and I talk about that in the book as well, and you've heard me talk about that. But we today we're just focusing on not taking thinker moments, not allowing ourselves to take the time to intentionally daydream because we think we're too busy. Or like in that research study, people are so trained out of it. And this was all age groups, by the way. This was 18-year-olds right up to 70 plus. So it's not just in young people or whatever. It's it's across the board. In fact, so there was a little shocking device in this experiment hidden in the room. And some people preferred to shock themselves than sit there and just think. And that is really a sign of our times. And it's really unhealthy for the brain and body. And we see that playing out in people battling with mental health and also battling with our body. It's it's a we need to regenerate. We like our cell phones wear down and we need to plug them in. Think a moment that are daydreams, that are intentional daydreaming, and basically are going to help you re-energize and reboot. So they're super important. Some of the brain benefits, fantastic brain benefits. So for example, so here's, here's my famous brain in my skull, not my skull. Okay, so basically rebooting means, when we talk about rebooting, it means that you're allowing your brain to have a physical rest so that the energy of your mind can move through and reboot the brain. Because the mind moves through the brain, the brain responds. So daydreaming allows this flow of energy through the brain to help re-energize it, which sends a really good healing wave through the body as well. So the entire, all your neurophysiology will benefit, which is wonderful. Okay, so in terms of the networks of your brain, when we look at these many ways that we can look at how the brain is responding, and one of the ways that I use is, use is using a QEEG from a neuroscientific angle. And the QEEG looks at the different energy frequencies in the brain. So it looks at alpha, delta, theta, alpha, beta, gamma, high gamma. You might have heard of those. And that's just how the brain actually, how that we can measure the response of the brain. I explain that in here. I have um, a table explaining the different waves. I have lots of ex examples. I show you my latest studies. I show you how you can literally control these brain brainwaves with your mind because that's what your mind's doing. Your, the brainwaves are just representations of your mind. So as you control your mind, you are then directing the energetic flow through the brain and therefore the, the neuroplasticity of the brain, which is fantastic to know. It's so helpful. Okay. So, and daydreaming, these thinker moments are a very constructive way of doing that. So when you do that, what we see is that you're actually going to get more balance between the two sides of the brain. You're going to get an increase in alpha activity over the front of the brain, which means that you become less impulsive and it means you become more insightful, which is wonderful because insightful means you're going to introspect more. And when you become insightful and introspective, you start gathering data, all the memories in your brain, and you become very creative. That'll then fire up a flow of gamma. And, and that means that you're moving towards learning new information. You're getting creative. Now we need Need that in our everyday life. We need that creative wisdom and daydreaming can help give you bursts of that. So if you're having a blocked moment in a meeting or like you feel mentally blocked and you're trying to make decisions, think of moments are a great way for getting gamma flowing, which means your creativity is going to start really flowing. Then also we're going to have an increase a little bit of an increase in delta activity. Delta activity normally happens when you're sleeping and it also happens during the day. Now, if you have suppressed thoughts, you'll get a lot of delta. You don't want a lot of delta during the day. You want bursts of delta in a nice pat organized way during the day and when you daydream you actually allow nice cleaning bursts of delta activity to move through your brain which once again has all those wonderful cognitive effects in terms of lowered impulsivity increased cognitive flexibility increased intelligence increased ability to introspect and to see things that to see to start thinking more creatively and expansively and so on okay so then you also get an increase in beta activity and beta activity is very across both sides we always want balance we always want balance we don't want more on one side than the other we want a nice flow beta activity is like the wave that's building up okay and high beta is the crest of the wave so we want little bursts of the, the white top of the wave so we see that when you daydream you get little bursts as you're focusing and then you get this lovely flow of beta across the brain so that's just some brain effects and if you want, if you want to know more about that and those are all great brain effects you can read about that in the book when those brain effects are happening, it's also impacting your DNA, which is wonderful to know. It's also a way of reducing inflammation in your brain and your body. So it's got so many benefits. I mean, who would not daydream just from hearing what I've told you already? Okay, so, and as I said, you can get lots of information in the book. So the opposite happens if you don't take regular thinker moments. So the opposite's going to happen. If we don't give our mind enough time to rest and our brain, well, our conscious mind time to rest and our brain. So just to make sure you understand that the brain, the body, and the conscious mind get tired. The non-conscious mind never gets tired. So daydreaming is a way of you giving your 
brain, your body, and your conscious mind a rest to keep your energy levels high, your creativity, your intelligence, and all those things. Okay, so if you don't do it, this can have a cumulative effect. And we all know that when you when the anxiety starts increasing and the panic attacks and the feeling of overwhelm and burnout, a lot of that can be controlled by thinker moments. Now, most of those things are coming, everything, every way that you show up. So most of those things that are happening, like feeling overwhelmed and depressed and anxious, which are not diseases. You've heard me say that many times. They are symptoms of an underlying cause. So most of the time, those feelings are coming from an underlying cause. There's something going on. There's a pattern. There's an established issue. There's a toxic trauma. There's a toxic habit. There's something going on that you need to address. And that's what the book helps you do. The neurocycle, the second part of the book, is how you manage traumas and toxic traumas and, and toxic habits, etc. over time. So I teach exactly how to do that. So the thinker moments are this extra bonus that you throw into your daily schedule. And you'll see in chapter 14 of this book, I tell you how I actually build thinker moments into my day, which I'm going to tell you about now. But essentially, when you don't take thinker moments and you keep on letting the day overwhelm you and you get frustrated because your creativity is dropping and you just keep pushing through and cumulatively, that's going to like build up. It's like building up toxic waste and that will affect your sleep. It could result in nightmares, night terrors, which are, that's one of the things that can result in obviously nightmares and night terrors also come from undealt with traumas and unprocessed information so you basically your overall quality of sleep can be affected so thinker moments are very very important for improving sleep a previous podcast i did on sleep so you can go listen to that with us and i mentioned thinker moments in there okay so the reality is that you cannot afford not to daydream because it will not daydreaming during the day will actually affect overall cognitive performance and mental health. So now you're thinking, this all sounds great. How do I do this? How do I just switch my mind into this daydream mode? How do I intentionally do that? So that's what I'm going to tell you to do. So here is how you do it. So I'm going to give you seven points and these are also in this book. Okay. So to do a thinker moment, you become the actor, the director, and the screenwriter. For a few moments, you become all of that and you kind of split into two and you watch yourself doing the daydreaming. So it's a very intentional, deliberate, I'm going to daydream. As I'm daydreaming, I'm literally watching myself daydreaming. Even though my eyes were closed, I'm watching myself. So I'm becoming the actor, the director, the producer, the screenwriter. You're doing it all. You're kind of on the stage. So almost imagine yourself, if you want to launch into this, imagine yourself on the stage being that, the actor, the producer, the director, the screenwriter, the whole lot on the stage or in the in the movie set okay and basically you are looking at your mental performance it is your mental performance okay so you want to see what's going on what's that what's going on in your mind if you want to know what's going on and why you showing up like you are this is a fantastic way of doing that so not only are you getting all those brain boosting benefits but you're also getting some insight into what's going on in your mind we're so busy that we don't take the time to really think feel and choose deeply about what is really going on in our mind? What's driving us in these patterns? So obviously you're going to go through the whole neurocycle like I always teach. Day daydreaming starts training you to self-regulate more that you can see these patterns that you need to identify. Okay, so the first thing, get become the actor, director, screenwriter and producer of your movie. Okay, second thing is simply close your eyes. So the mindset is become this actor, director, etc. So imagine yourself in the movie set. And the second thing is close your eyes, okay? It's important to close your eyes and just start letting your mind wander, okay? Go into this with, here's another, now, very, okay, so I told you in that experiment, people in this day and age with fast technology don't like to do this mind wandering thing because it's like, what do I do? It's boring or I want stimulation. Get so used to having stimulation that they don't quite know what to do. So what you do is, this is the third thing. Okay, first thing is the actor director thing. Second thing is close your eyes. Third thing is the first thoughts that you think of must be meaningful and pleasant. So think of a meaningful pleasant thought. So you might have to just tell yourself what thought first. So like force a thought, but meaningful and pleasant. Don't make it fun. You can come to fun ones, but make it meaningful and pleasant. So what do I mean by that? Meaningful and pleasant could be something like, and I give an example over here, topics that you would find rewarding to daydream about, like a pleasant memory 
What think of a pleasant memory? So something that's really like maybe you've just had a conversation with someone and you resolve something and it was just like such a pleasant memory. It's just like a beautiful thing now and it's made you feel happy. Think about that. Think of a, a lovely weekend away that you've had. I mean, those are two things that I thought about today when I was doing my daydreaming. So that's why I'm telling you that they were meaningful and they were pleasant. So I started as I closed my eyes, I started with a pleasant and meaningful. You can bring in the fun later, but fun can make you think of ice cream, which is not a bad thing, especially if it's healthy ice cream. But start with the meaningful, pleasant that gets you deep. And that kind of gets the ball rolling. And from there, you can find that you can get into the flow. Now, as you flow, and this is now the fourth point, be observant about what you're thinking about. Remember I said you're the actor, director, screenwriter, etc. So be observant. Maybe even have your phone if you want to, a notebook and whatever. And, and as thoughts start coming up, you can start observing what's coming up a lot. Wow, this thought keeps coming back. Oh, gosh, I didn't think about that for ages. Or, so in other words, don't just let it flow without observing. Okay, flow by observing. What are you getting? What are the messages here? What's what's coming up? Because you, you might find that as the flow happens, there's the solution to that problem that you were want, wanting to find. There's that answer to that relationship issue. There's that insight into whatever. There's that problem. Look at this. There's six. This this has come up six times in three, in three seconds or whatever. And this is what's upsetting me. This keeps coming back. I'm ruminating on that. I need to work on that. I need to do a full sixty three day neurocycle. So be observant as you daydream. And and as and then so as you come out of the daydreaming, and I'll talk about time in a moment. Have something that you can write on to just make note of those thoughts that the creative ideas that popped up that you want to remember because you want to use them and those patterns that you notice, the thoughts that came up quite frequently and that were caused you perhaps some distress and write those down as well because it's giving you an indication of what's going on in your moment mind at that moment that's affecting how you are showing up in whatever you're doing okay so i've said here i'm just going to read this point to you be observant about what you are thinking about so as you take a thinker moment you may be surprised to notice that what thoughts and feelings pop up from your non-conscious you will be surprised i can pretty much guarantee you will be surprised don't panic as this is perfectly normal just take a note of them and then plan on addressing them later. Try to avoid ruminating on them and letting them interrupt your internal rest time. Boy, is that critical. So if you see something that's coming up and it keeps interfering and you can't seem to move past it, open your eyes, write it down, tell yourself, I'm going to do a neurocycle on that. I'll sort that out. Go back to finishing your daydreaming. See, so don't let things control you. You have agency. You control your mind, okay? You want to get the best out of this daydreaming moment. So those things that are disrupting, stop, write them down, close your eyes, get back into the stage, okay? So you can also, as you daydream, you could listen to some music if you want to. You could be walking, keep your eyes open, <laughs> obviously. Sometimes you can you can keep your eyes, you don't always have to close your eyes. If you like daydreaming and doodling, playing with Play-Doh, if you feel like doing something like that while you're daydreaming, painting, do it. Absolutely. That's no problem. In fact, many people will find that that activity of the little artistic creativity is a great way of getting yourself into this flow. Okay, and then the next thing, point number six, trust that it is possible to have a good experience if you prime your brain with topics you find pleasant. Okay, so in other words, trust that this is a good experience. And I say that because so many people have said to me, I don't like doing it. And that experiment I quoted also indicated that people would rather shock themselves than think. We're all thinking, we're always thinking, feeling and choosing. But the daydreaming where you're actually exploring those thoughts and allowing your mind to reboot and you know, in the, all the ways that I've described. So trust that you can do it. But that's why I said start with a pleasant, meaningful thought. Don't do planning. Okay, that's, that's point number seven. Don't confuse planning with thinking for pleasure, okay? You can get, if you feel that you need a plan, I'm not saying don't plan, but don't confuse planning for thinking of thinking with pleasure because generally the research shows that if you go straight into planning, it'll actually make you feel like tired because it's like work, okay? So you want to reboot. So definitely start with a pleasant, let the flow, do the observation, find the ones that are toxic. You may have some, you may not have some today. Even if you think a moment's going to be its own creative moment, okay? And unique. It's not going to all be the same. You know, stop and catch those toxic ones and write them down so that you they don't interfere with this moment and you compartmentalize them to do a neurocycle on them at a later moment, all that stuff. Then you could end with planning. If you're feeling that desire, okay, I need a plan, I need to organize, then you can do a little bit of planning and if you want, you could write that down and that could end your session. So very quickly, just to tell you, when, when I have a thinker moment, I, so I often like to just stare out the window 
or sit in the sun or just to go sit on the steps and grab my coffee and just sit in the sun and, and, and just let the sun, because it's so good, the vitamin D. Or sometimes I can't get access to the sun because it's snowing or raining or, or something when I'm inside a high building or something and there's no time to run outside. Then I'll just close my eyes and do it the way that I've told you. How long? As long as you want. You can do five, ten seconds, five, ten minutes. Just make sure that you do it regularly. I try to make sure that I tune in. I'm very self-regulated. I've trained myself to be. And I tune in. When I'm starting to really feel like overwhelm, I know I need to think a moment to bring me back into the moment. And I do it often with that breathing technique, the 10-second pause, where you breathe in for three and out for seven, which launches me into the daydreaming think a moment. And then I do my think a moment. I try to do at least one 10-minute block during the day, five to 10 minutes. And I try and do as many little ones. Sometimes they're only five seconds or 10 seconds or a minute during the course of the day. It's also part of my sleep preparation, and I explain that in the book as well, that thinker moments, and I mentioned that earlier on, that thinker moments are also part of sleep. So in summary, very quickly, the seven ways that you are going to, how do you daydream? How do you get into a thinker moment, which is intentional daydreaming? To do a thinker moment, you become the actor, director, screenwriter, producer. You start with a pleasant, meaningful memory. Be observant about what you are thinking and catch those thoughts that are toxic and that are you starting to ruminate on. Catch those, compartmentalize, come back. So be very deliberate and intentional. You can listen to music and doodle and go for a walk if you want to as well. No, absolutely okay. That's very good for stimulating. And then trust it's possible that you can have a positive experience, that it can be very positive if you start with something pleasant. So force yourself to start with something pleasant. And if an unpleasant thing comes up, as I said, capture it, write it down. And if you don't want to go back into daydreaming in that moment, there's no legalistic laws around this. Just leave it for alone for a while and go back later in the day and make sure that you focus on the pleasant and discipline yourself to just think of those pleasant memories and allow you. And as soon as a toxic one comes up, just grab it again. So just get in the habit of doing that so that you don't, you know, try and fix it all in that moment because you want to fix your, the toxic things in a very systematic way using the neurocycle over time. And then don't confuse planning with thinking for pleasure, rather leave planning for the end of the moment. Remember, does all this amazing daydreaming, does all this amazing brain stuff. You're going to pretty much improve brain health, sleep health, body health, cognitive fluency, creativity, intelligence, so many things. So it's very much part of cleaning up your mental mess. It's part of my daily routine, and it's going to help you find those things that you need to work on, those toxic established habits and traumas that are blocking us from functioning like we should. So it all works together. I really cannot recommend Thinker Moments enough. This is something that we really need to build into our life. All the things I recommend, you can just build them into your life. Once you know what you're doing, it's easy to then just do them. It doesn't take 10 seconds. You're going to, you don't want to do them anyway, but you now you're going to do them properly, that you really get the benefit out of them. So just in closing, it's really going to help us get to that deeper level. You're really going to, when you give your brain and your body and your conscious mind this regular rebooting, it's really going to help you dig into that non-conscious level, become very introspective and increase your wisdom overall. So in conclusion, what we feel and how we show up is a function of what we're thinking, feeling, and choosing. It's a function of our mind. So daydreaming is a, well of, is a way of helping you to deliberately and intentionally shape that. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to talking to you next time and go be a happy daydreamer.